Efectivamente, el país está viviendo una situación de guerra y ese lenguaje las pandillas lo entienden muy bien. Mata, y es la que tiene la guerra con la policía, la que está matando a la policía. Se corren dos al ver la presencia policial, se corren a esconderse. Go, 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 go. It's 3 a.m. in San Salvador, and police are rounding up gang members. Dozens of cops are spreading out all over the poor neighborhood of Soyapango. They're about to go house to house right now. Uh, they've got search warrants, and they're looking for gang members. <laughs> Inside, a man is handcuffed. His tattoo is proof of his membership in the 18th Street Gang, otherwise known as Diaz y Ocho. The woman tells police that her boyfriend is just a mechanic, despite his massive gang tattoo. What is this man being charged with? Dozens of gang members are arrested in the nighttime raid. We're here, along with members of the local press, so the government can show off its iron fist policy in action with a big show of force. That same night, a few kilometers away in downtown San Salvador, there's a different show of force. The third car bomb to go off outside a government office in recent weeks. It's a new chapter in a conflict many are now calling a war. The gangs are blamed. Last week, there was a bomb placed outside the Justice Ministry, and about half an hour ago behind me, a car bomb exploded outside the Tax Ministry. This is sort of the latest tactic they've been using. There have been grenades thrown inside police stations. Police have been targeted all year, but the whole car bomb thing is really new and really scary. There are two huge and powerful street gangs in El Salvador, Marisal Vitrucha, or MS-13, and Barrio Diaz y Ocho, or 18th Street. They've been fighting a brutal battle for territory for decades. But now they are also fighting a new enemy, as the police and military have been ordered to crush them. Violence has now risen to levels that haven't been seen since the country's civil war. Nearly 700 murders in June and over 900 in August. In El Salvador these days, there's one murder an hour for a pretty small country, only six million people. It doesn't take long when you're you know, going out at night to stumble upon a scene like this with a body laying dead in the streets. And that's, that's pretty much what people here are living with, these just constant shootings and, and murders. Right now, El Salvador is on track to be the nation with the highest homicide rate in the world. It is because of what the Supreme Court calls organized violence against the state, including killings by gangs of bus drivers which forced the shutdown of the country's transport system, that it has given them a new name, terrorist, a name not typically used to describe street gangs. There are an estimated 60,000 gang members in El Salvador, but as many as half a million people depend on the gangs for their livelihoods. In a nation of 6.3 million, as many as 1 in 12 people have ties to the gangs. Raul Mahango, a former guerrilla, helped broker a truce between the gangs in 2012. Initially backed by the government, it collapsed after they pulled support. Mahango thinks that attacking the gangs will only make things worse. Efectivamente, el país está viviendo una situación de guerra. Hay una situación de enfrentamiento que se produce todos los días, que está dejando cerca de 30 muertos diarios. Y obviamente, la guerra es lo que más produce muerte, dolor y sufrimiento. This new application of the word terror, terrorist, 
that the government's using to describe the gangsters. What, is, what does that mean for the whole situation? Sí. A mí me parece que ese fue un exceso. Tipificar de terroristas a las pandillas, primero es darle connotación política. En segundo lugar, pone en peligro de que el 11% de la población salvadoreña, que está de una o de otra manera relacionada con las pandillas, sea considerada como terrorista. Y esto nos convierta al país con más terroristas en el mundo. How do you see this working out? Do you think this is the right solution, this all-out war on the gang members? La acción represiva ha demostrado que no resuelve el problema. Por el contrario, lo vuelve mucho más agudo. La única experiencia de éxito que se tuvo fue al proceso que se le llamó tregua, que fue el único que logró reducir de 15 homicidios diarios a 5. Now, after the truce failed, the murder rate is the highest it's been since El Salvador's brutal civil war in the 1980s in which 75,000 people were killed. The war was fought between a right-wing government supported by the U.S. and left-wing guerrillas, among them the FMLN, or Farabundi Marti National Liberation Front, which is now the ruling party in government. You've been quoted as saying the government itself now should recognize that at one point they too uh, had been murderers, they had extorted as well. What do you mean by that? Al FMLN en su momento se le calificó de delincuentes y también de terroristas, ¿verdad? porque mataba, porque secuestraba, porque tenía control de territorio, a no reconocer que este fenómeno que tenemos tiene las mismas características estructurales que las que tuvo la guerrilla es un error. What do you see as the uh, the difference in the situation between what's happening right now? and what happened uh, in early 2012 when you were negotiating the truce. Hoy están cerrados todos los espacios para el diálogo. Cuando el gobierno mismo te dice que el que a hierro mata, a hierro muere, lo que está, te, te está anunciando es guerra. Y ese lenguaje, las pandillas lo entienden muy bien. We sat down with journalist Jose Luis Sanz, the editor-in-chief of the controversial El Faro newspaper to try to get a better idea of what's going on. His paper revealed the existence of police death squads carrying out point-blank executions of suspected gang members. De hecho, la manera en la que el gobierno lo está proyectando hacia la sociedad es, es como una guerra. Hay bajas civiles inevitables, como en una guerra. Y hay un enemigo a eliminar, como en una guerra. En buena parte de los homicidios, eh, y el gobierno lo reconoce, los comete la policía. El ministro de Defensa llegó a decir que por encima del 90% era, de las víctimas eran pandilleros, como si la sociedad no tuviera que preocuparse entonces de la cantidad de muertos. En todo caso, aun si fuera así, es un mensaje muy peligroso, es un mensaje casi de exterminio. We're about to head out with Los Halcones, which means the Hawks. They are one of the premier uh, rapid response teams operating uh, in El Salvador today. Um, and their job is to basically go out and engage. Uh, if there's an emergency, they get into shootouts with the gangs and things like that. Uh, there's already been 25 people murdered today. It's not even 8 p.m. And they just told us that one of their units uh, took fire early this afternoon. So it's uh, probably going to be an interesting evening. What's the situation in this neighborhood here? It's one of the areas of San Salvador most conflict because there are the two pandillas, the 18 and the MS. It's a area of fighting between the two pandillas. It's a zona of war. We drove to the neighborhood. It was Barrio 18 Revolucionarios, uh, Diaz Yocho. And you know, two minutes later, you're in an MS-13 barrio. And if you're from one of these neighborhoods, you can't cross that line. La gente que vive acá, cuando entra, tiene que venir con las luces apagadas. Es, una, eh, es como una regla. Si no es, viene con las luces encendidas, o es extraño, o sea, no es de acá, ¿verdad? O, o, o es la policía. Este tipo de pandilla, aquí 18, la, la 18 dividida, sureña, y la 18 revolucionaria. La, la revolucionaria es la más sanguinaria. Mata. Y es la que tiene la guerra con la policía, la que está matando a la policía. Right then, the police spot two suspects and go after them. Se corren dos al ver la presencia policial, se corren a esconderse. Ah, pues no se va a ir, parate. We just 
saw two suspects. They're being chased right now. They were running out. Officers say the men were posted as lookouts, letting the gangs know who was coming in and out of the neighborhood. These guys here are allegedly members of 18th Street Revolutionarios. The, uh, the officers seem pretty sure, and they say that when they see them, generally they run. They either try to stash their weapons, or they run into a house with an open door. Can you automatically just arrest anyone for being part of a gang? It's kind of hard to reconcile how powerful and organized the gangs actually are. They sometimes look like a group of disorganized, scrawny teenagers. But in this state of war with the gangs, even the fiercest police are so scared of their capacity for murder and vengeance, they wear masks to hide their identities. Pedimos ahora la reivindicación de ellos. Venimos de familias desintegradas, pobreza extrema, y la única fuerza viva y real que existe en nuestras comunidades se llama pandilla.